the end of the video. of examining students' response in each item of the test. It composed of two characteristics. These are desirable and undesirable characteristics. Desirable items, these are the items that are retained for subsequent use. While undesirable items, these are subjected to revised or rejected. There are three criteria in determining desirable and undesirable items. First is difficulty of an item. Second is discrimination of the power of an item. Lastly, measures of attractiveness. Why item analysis important? Item analysis can help you evaluate how well your objective items are actually working. Item difficulty indicates the proportion of students who got the item right. A high percentage indicates an easy item and a low percentage indicates a difficult item. In solving the difficulty index P of each item, you will be using this formula. Here are the interpretations of the discrimination index result. There are three classifications of discrimination index. Positive discrimination, negative discrimination, and zero discrimination. When we say positive discrimination, the proportion of the students who get the item right in the upper group is greater than to the lower group. Well, when we say that it is a negative discrimination, the proportion of the students who got the item right in a lower group is greater than the higher group. But when we say that this is zero discrimination, the proportion of the high-performing students and the low-performing students who get the item right is equal. Distractor analysis is another useful step in reviewing the effectiveness of a test item. All of the incorrect options or distractors should actually be distracting. Preferably, each distractor should be selected by a greater portion of the lower scores than of the top group. In order for a distractor to be acceptable, it should attract at least one candidate. If no one selects a distractor, 
it is important to revise the option and attempt to make the destructor a more plausible choice. In order to solve for the index of effectiveness, here is the formula. should know and remember that an item can be retained if the difficulty index is within the range of 0.26 and 0.75 and its discrimination index is 0.20 and above. Also, an item needs to be revised if the difficulty index is within the range of 0.26 and 0.75 and its discrimination index is 0.19 and below or the difficulty index is not within the range of 0.26 and 0.75 and the discrimination index is 0.20 and above. Also, we have to remember that an item needs to be discarded or rejected if the difficulty index is not within the range of 0.26 and 0.75 and the discrimination index is 0.19 and below. Now that you have the ideas, here is how you do the item analysis. First, we will arrange the test scores from highest to lowest. Then, we select the criterion group, we identify the high group which is the top 27% and the low group which is the lowest 27%. And take note that the top 50% and bottom 50% for a class with less than 30 students while 27% on the top and bottom which is 27% also for a class with 30 or more students. And the third steps we have, for each item we count the number of examinees in the upper group who have correct responses. Do a separate, similar procedure for the lower group. And the fourth step we have, to solve for the difficulty index or P of each item. Using the formula, P is equal to H sub C plus L sub C all over 2N. The fifth step is to solve for the discrimination index or D of each item. Using the formula, D is equal to H sub C minus L sub C all over N. The sixth step is to solve for the index of effectiveness or IE of each distractor or option. Using the formula, IE is equal to H sub G minus L sub G all over N. In doing item analysis, we also concern the reliability index or the R or alpha. We have the Kuda Richardson method or KR. We have two types which is the KR20 and the KR21 where K is the number of test items, summation, is the symbol for the sum of P is the proportion of the correct responses to a particular item Q equals 1 minus P and S squared which is the variance of the scores on the test here is a short demo on how to do item analysis this is an electronic format for this topic we have the section the correct answers the total number of items which is 1 to 10 the name of the students, their answers, and the 0 to 1 form which is needed for the next step. Then we copy it. And then paste it in the next sheet which is the scoring and reliability. But we don't paste it automatically but instead click the values and then we have that. And here are the total score of each student. Then we sort it out from highest to lowest to obtain the high and the low group. Since it exceeds 30 students, so we will be using the 27% of the total number of students. We will paste it on the right blank space to see clearly the high and the low group. So here are the high group, the top 10 scorers. Low group, which 
scores the top low scores. This sheet shows the item values is proper, which we will input the top scorers, which is the high group, and the low scorers, which is the low group. So you copy it. Then paste it on the item analysis sheet. Same goes to the low group. We should remember that we will paste it through values instead of pasting it directly. Then you will see that the needed data are already inputted automatically on the cells, which is very convenient. Also with this sheet, you will see in the count, the P, the Q, the PQ, the average, the variance, and the sum PQ, the KR20, and the KR21. The needed data are already there. We will proceed to the sheet of the destructor where I already inputted the answers of the student in the letter form. And the needed data are already shown. Then we proceed to the report from the item analysis and the report of the destructor. Thank you for watching!